Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Lancer Custom Works, where I will be discussing the various mech builds you could make and play with Lancer. In Kiju, please god help me, on the defender scale of protecting everyone and I can keep my allies safe if I murder everything that can hurt them, this is where Inkiju is, it's not even on the scale anymore, here's how you play Inkiju, first step, get hot, second step, in danger zone, Inkiju is hyper destructive at melee combat, it can use its plasma talons which is super good at immobilizing anyone that move in its threat, and since it uses a special reaction that doesn't count against the total reaction limit per turn, if the conditions are correct, you can in fact swipe a target with Plasma Talon and overwatch them in the same round, and it works every single turn. Its core power is also ultra lethal when a battle is nearing its end, where everything is having lower health and Inkiju can just rip and tear all of them apart while moving like a demon, Slayer. The problem, is that's all Inkiju is good at, it can't do tech or ranged attack when in danger zone, but it also moves 3 speed faster in danger zone, reaching a potential 9 speed when getting hot with max agility. Other than that, it's also very strong, and knows when a prey is suffering die very soon. However, if Inkiju isn't in danger zone, it's way slower, it's also terrible at tech attack but it's not like it can use it often, and in danger zone, it's a direct danger to any of its allies that are too close. So basically, if Inkiju is doing its thing, its allies should stand way way behind it, or far from it. Since Inkiju shares license with Tokugawa as its alt frame, it also has access to Tokugawa's systems too. In the following builds, you will frequently find Torch, because it's a main melee weapon that set people on fire, and Lucifer class NHP, because more damage. You might also find external batteries to extend the range of any energy weapons, including the Plasma Talon which might make Inkiju even more dangerous, and Deep Well Heat Sinks, because Inkiju loves to play around with Danger Zone already so might as well make it safer, relatively. I would have expected more people to shove in deep well but Inkiju having only 5 base system points is rather limiting it. As for the role, I'm confidently saying that most of the following 40 Inkiju builds qualify as striker defender. It's just really hard to have Inkiju to do anything that isn't charging straight at the enemy and going rampage to drag all the attention onto it, but even doing that in Lancer can vary enough that other roles could be mentioned too, just not as much. Anyway. Let's go with the Striker Defender in Kija builds first since I already mentioned them. This is Cry for Judas, a probably standard in Kija for what you could expect from this destructive frame. Just get hot, get close or go somewhere you want to block off, and you are good to go. You want more damage, you have Lucifer, you want to kick someone off like a bowling ball, grapple something, and use total strength sweet 3. Superior by design makes enemies invade fueling your anger instead of hurting you, and Plasma Gauntlet is just there because why not, you are in danger zone practically all the time already anyway, and since you are in an Inkiju, you are already expecting to get stressed out. This is Honorable Misfit, and Universal Comp Terashima Inkiju. Now, you might think that you can cheat for more health with Inkiju with this, but no, that's not how it works. You only truly expend your core power on bifurcating someone, this is when the core bonus actually activates, but hey, this still means that you can heal up by glory killing someone. Adaptive reactor also help a lot since Inkiju will probably be stressing themselves frequently, and having something to quickly patch up reactor stress is quite helpful. And good lord, a Terashima with Lucifer and Jaeger Kuz 2 for more damage, aided by brute force which already gives an accuracy to the competition role, that can also get even more damage with nuclear cavalier because Inkiju gets hot all the time already is going to hit very hard. This is hunting hound and that's so many segment knives. Is it a smart idea? No, but is piloting in Kiju a smart idea in the first place? Also no. The more horrifying thing is that this Inkiju can fly, with Mimic Mesh and Hunter for even more movement, so even height won't let you escape it. An Inkiju with Hunter or Skirmisher are a very different beast compared to one without it, as they can keep relentlessly moving towards its prey forever. Add in external batteries for even more threat, Scylla for even more attack to protect your allies, and you got one dangerous Inkiju that's going to quickly cook itself. And if you don't like segment knives, there's shock knives to stab and burn people at the same time. This is Knight of the Shock Knives, and not only can it set people on fire, it can also turn invisible, 
because everyone should fear an invisible Enkiju. This is dangerous at both ends, a brawler Enkiju with apparently all the bristle crowns in the world, anyone who get grappled is just going to die, if total strength sweet 2 didn't done them in first. Synthetic muscle netting also let this Enkiju grappled against everything, and can carry people in a pinch, just don't get too hot. It can also jump over any obstacle, and manipulators for, caressing someone's face before you murder them. The fool riding an invisible tiger is a very normal Enkiju that can also turn invisible. So here's the thing about Primal Fury, it only targets against anything that do anything with its threat, as long as you stay out of it, you won't be harmed, this includes being in the center of the source, hence, Black Thumb and Technophile. Just imagine a person on the back of an Enkiju trying to repair it without getting flung off as the Enkiju murders everything around it except them. This is Shooting Star, a Seekomet Enkiju because Lancer Modular Mech Builder allows the player to make a completely unhinged and murderous mech even more unhinged and murderous. This Enkiju also has Gaiji's frame and external batteries to have a Threat 5 Plasma Talon, can fly with Ace for even more movement, and has Heat Fall for easy overcharge. This build is exactly why I'm terrified of making this episode. This is Red Moon Ulf Heaton, here's what happens when you grapple someone and teleport voluntarily, the guy you grappled moves with you. This Enkiju also has three fold knives, two of which have molten wreath so anyone near them is going to get shotgunned, with synthetic muscle netting and total strength sweet 2 too. Let's just say this Enkiju can kidnap people very easily and make them disappear permanently. This is Idolin Farmer, other than having Scylla for more attacks, and Mimic Mesh to creep ever closer to your allies, this Enkiju has Exemplar so whoever you smacked will be trapped with you until they perish, fun for all family. This is Spears of Light, an Enkiju equipped with 2 Threat 5 Impact Lance thanks to Gaijis and X-Bat for some real multi-hit action with a staggering 9 speed on Danger Zone, but it's absurdly fragile so it itself is in a Danger Zone in a way. It also packs explosive vents because with how often Enkiju gets too hot, it will be quite useful for burning anyone nearby. Oh yeah, it can also fly, because of course it can. This is Auto Cremate, a lightning generator in Kiju to zap anyone nearby, with dual catalyst pistol to fry loads of people rapidly with gunslinger, too bad it can't use the guns when it gets too hot, but it's one way to get hot very quickly with 2 heat per gun. On the other hand, maybe don't use so many segment knives. This is the Wild Tiger, a very normal in Kiju that has hardpoint reinforcement to charge without caring about damage on its turn, which with Juggernaut, is just going to let you run through everything. Also, this Enkiju has deep well heat sink, so it can sustain in danger zone mode for a longer brutal murder fest. This is Supersonic Chainsaw, a ramjet Enkiju that just loves to run and jump like a maniac and knock down people with power knuckles which just further punishes them for moving when they tries to stand back up, it's just a repeated cycle of brutality with this build. This is Go for the Jugular, an Enkiju that can see everything with Eye of Horus, even hidden target is not so hidden against this Enkiju, while it can run and hide with Reactive Weave and Infiltrator, making this mech a goddamn predator in a jungle, especially with all the burns it can bring. And finally, there's Pain Train, an Azura Enkiju with heat fall coolant, because of course an Enkiju wants more action to murder even more things. And with deep well heat sink, this Enkiju is a no-nonsense murder train that will run over everything. And that's all on Striker Defender Enkiju, you can probably see that Enkiju is actually quite easy to build, because its traits and everything already told you what it really wants, what really restricted is that allies need to distance themselves for safety, or they could just not move at all. A rather easy task for player that like to shoot down targets from a distance, not so much for player that likes melee however. Just try not to stand too close to Enkiju. Anyway, let's move on to the second most numerous Enkiju builds, the Striker Controller. Keep absolutely still. Vision's based on movement. This is a completely normal Duskwing, a Duskwing that's just a bit larger. It has flicker field, reactive weave, flash charges, anything you need to avoid being damaged while blinding others. But this Duskwing also has enough health to attract all the attention with Exemplar, you want this to prevent your prey from running as you murder them anyway. This is 1v1 me you fucking scrub, another flying Enkiju that can pull people in with mag cannon or even blast them with Annihilator before ripping them apart. It even has a magnetic shield to either shield itself and its allies, or prevent its prey from leaving, permanently. This is Fire Emblem 7, an Enkiju whose plan revolved around a shock knife with shock wreath, quickly burning and blinding the target, 
preventing them from attacking anyone except the Enkiju that's right in front of it. If that doesn't work, there's flash charges, and if that still doesn't work, just kill them, you are in an Enkiju after all. This is EXS of Calamity, Maelstrom, an Enkiju that actually has a tech attack system, an aggressive system sync, which can immediately make the target regret staying away from you by setting them on fire. If they still run anyway, you have Mag Cannon and Ferris Lash, either way, someone is going to die. And this is stuck in the brambles, an Enkiju that trap people with Webjaw and then just maul them to death with a pair of Threat 5 Impact Lance for shish kebabbing people, again. Gaiji's frame and external batteries can be a terrifying combo. And that's all on striker controller in Kiju, which just dabbles in the controller role just a tiny bit to make sure nobody escapes their fate of being brutally destroyed by in Kiju. Anyway, now comes the real fun part, because I have a number of support defender in Kiju builds to share, and you hear it right. This is Battle Bus, a Fomorian battle taxi in Kiju. You are probably asking why. Well, because you can, and it works. Again, as long as you don't touch the threat, you are completely fine, anyone sitting on top of Enkiju just has to not get down at all when it's in pure rage, that includes the person being dragged by the cable. Not only that, this Enkiju can freeze target in place with stasis generator to buy its allies some time, and the four plasma cutters can both burn and heat up the targets rapidly, and if they exposed, that just means more damage. This Enkiju can also jump to carry people over everything, an exemplar to keep people trapped or focusing on it. This is Mystic Eyes of Death Perception, a fast flying Enkiju that can deploy Lotus Projector to know everything about anything near it, because as it turns out, being in danger zone doesn't block it from deploying drone. And other than all its shock knives, it has accelerate or blink charges to throw itself or its allies away from it. Now this is a more normal support Enkiju for sure, and if you are asking, yes, this is the only support Enkiju without mule harness. This is here we go again, another battle taxi in Kiju, except this time it can go kickboxing with Titanomachi, Duelist, and Juggernaut for all the brawling, with Asso Stabilizer to fix up people quickly. And funny enough, this in Kiju has an X-Bat Unraveler, so if it sees someone at half health about to run, it can just use this to finish them off at even range 15 if it's not too hot. And this is I want to get off in Kiju's wild ride, another Fomorian battle taxi in Kiju with all the plasma cutter in the world again, but this time it packs an enclave support shield for more defense along with Asso stabilizer. Also, a funny tip with Hunter, by throwing Plasma Talon out with Hunter, you won't get it back until the end of your turn, so you can do this to keep yourself from hurting your allies if they really need to move. And that's all on support defender in Kiju, at this point if a frame is size 2, just expect there to be battle taxi build, it just works so well. Now we are moving on the truly special case, first with a rather special artillery defender in Kiju build. This is the mountain that feeds, an Enkiju with a displacer, because of course. The build is a heat fall overcharge stabilized build, it basically works by firing the displacer, and turn in danger zone, stabilize at the start of your next turn to cool down and reload, then overcharge to fire the displacer again for massive damage. If you want truly massive damage, you can use Lucifer to boost the damage, and with deep well heat sink, you don't need to worry much about heat after the first activation turn. This build basically makes sure that Enkiju will remain extremely dangerous off its turn and on its turn even from a distance. The last two Enkiju builds are a very, special case. Apparently two submitters decided to make their builds together, for the sole goal of having an Enkiju riding another Enkiju to slap the same target with two plasma talons at once, just cause. This is Alexander the Great, the rider, which can destroy some poor idiot with a super stack torch with OP Cal, Nuclear Cavalier, Lucifer, and Hunter Lock, with Sisyphus and Eye of Horus to make sure the attack hits so hard the target is vaporized from reality. It also has Black Thumb to patch up both itself and the other Enkiju, Tactician to take advantage of the situations, and Bonded because more support is best support, which it can use Sisyphus for that too. And this is Bucephalus, the mount, which has Fomorion to make it large enough for another Enkiju to ride it, along with Croil Rifle, Hunter, and Skirmisher for all the movement as a ridiculously quick steed, with Deep Well Heat Sink to make it last in Danger Zone a bit longer. And that, is a fun combination and teamwork between two submitters, that of course can also be used individually or in a different manner entirely. After reviewing through all 40 of Enkiju builds submitted by my viewers, I can safely or unsafely say that Enkiju is one ridiculously dangerous mech to be around with, and that's why it's such a fun to ride it and just destroy everything with it. Once again, 
Big shout out to all my viewers who has submitted their submissions for this episode, that was once again, a very fun list to go through. As for the next episode, it's this guy, I'm once again terrified, for an entirely different reason altogether. Anyway, that's all for now and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.